Hey guys, Mr. Enyart here, and today we're going to be talking about percent and rates for lesson 24 in uh, Eureka Math. And I really like percents and rates key because I like baseball, and baseball uses a lot of these. Um, and so do farms, apparently, because the first question here is about Robbie's fruit farm. So why don't you pause the video and take some time to read the question. Okay, so hopefully you had time to read the question, or at least pause to do so. Let's look at the different ways we can represent um, these numbers. So we've got this 30% here. And 30%, as we all know, is a representation of something that is of 100, 30 out of 100. We could say that 30% is equal to 30 hundredths. And if I do 25%, it would be 25 hundredths, because all of these are going to be out of 100. And the problem tells us that right here, because there's 100 acres. And over here, we have 25 acres that has the empire apples. So the empire apples, the part to whole ratio would be 25 out of 100 acres are the empire. Does everyone see that? Take a moment and see how I got 25, 100, 25 to 100 as my part to whole ratio for empire apples to acres. So hopefully you were able to figure out that the 25 to 100 was found from 25 acres of empire apples to 100 total acres for the farm. Now 30% is going to be out of 100. So 30 out of 100, again, we have 100 acres, but 30 of those acres are going to be Macintosh. Um, so let's write that on our line here because it wants the part to whole ratio. So I'm not going to write 30% here. This would be the wrong direction following. What I am going to write is 30 to 100. And again, the 100 represents acres. The 30 represents how much of the 100 is Macintosh apples. And so now we get to the Fuji apples, and that information is going to be found right here. It says the remainder of the farm has Fuji apples. And how do we figure out the remainder? Well, we need to look at what we already know about Empire and Macintosh. Empire was 25 out of 100. Macintosh was 30 out of 100. Together, that's a total of 55 out of 100 acres in those other two apples, which means if I do 100 total acres and I subtract the 55 acres that take up Empire and Macintosh, I'll get my remaining acres. And obviously we can go through some good old school regrouping here. Bottom line is we're going to get 45 acres left that represent the Fuji apples. So we can write 45 out of 100. And remember, your teachers are going to love when you write all this work out here and show them you know what you're doing. And so now for the sake of ease with uh, marking my grid as it wants me to, I'm going to color label my empire, okay? And I'm going to use a blue for Macintosh, and then I'm going to use a green for Fuji. And then if I want to be really precise here, I can write red for empire, I can write blue for Macintosh, and I can write green for Fuji. So now I'm just going to go fill in the right amounts. Now looking very carefully, I'm going to zoom way in here because I like to zoom. If I look very carefully at this, I can count and see that this is a 10 by 10 grid. Well, obviously a 10 by 10 grid means there are 100, but that every single row or column, sorry, this is a column, is going to be a 10, 10, so this would be 10 and 20. So if I filled in these two columns, I know that's 20 because it's two sets of 10. I don't really have to go through and count each individual one if I'm going to be going in groups of 10s. So now I'm just going to do my empire, which was 25. And so I can fill in 25. 
which you can see I did here. I've got 20 and then five more. It's not exactly perfect, but you get the idea. Let's go ahead and do the rest for Macintosh and for Fuji. Pause the video and you do it before me. Okay, so here you can see blue is my Macintosh and I filled in 30 of 100. Green is my Fuji and that was the remaining, that was 45. And then of course I already showed you the red. And, and now the point of this first activity was for you to notice that when we make things out of hundreds, we can represent numbers as fractions of a hundred, as ratios of a hundred, but also as percentage, percentages. A percentage is an amount of something out of a hundred. So you can think of 30 hundredths would just be 30 percent. And so in my part to whole ratio, I notice that the first part of my 100 whole ratio is the percentage. Green would be 45%. Macintosh, the blue, would be 30%. And the red would be 25%. And if I add all those together, I get 100%, which would be 100 out of 100, or the whole thing. So here we have 25%. Here's the 45%, and here's the 30%, and that does take up the whole 100. So I'm not really going to go through the next one. I just want to look at these numbers. These numbers seem confusing, but they're really not. What we want to do is understand why they're there. So when we see this number here, um, I'm kind of highlighting it up here, but I'll use my little laser pointer, po 0 0.01. What does that mean? Well, if we zoom in even more, and we really break down the place values here, we can see that this is a fraction of a whole. It could be a ratio. It could be a percentage. We just need to figure out why. This would be, if we look at it here, this would be our ones place. This is what our, our decimal, and the decimal uh, separates the ones from all the pieces of a whole. And the first piece of a whole are called tenths. And remember, tenths are like dimes. We could say that a dime is one-tenth of a dollar. So this would be our one-tenths place. This would be our holes. And this one over here would be our hundredths. And we call those hundredths spelled like this. Running out of room, oh no. And so when I see 0 0.01, I can write that a few ways. I can write 0 0.01 and say that that is equal to 1 hundredth, since it's in the hundredth place and there are no tenths. I could also say, though, it's the same as 1%. Because remember, a percentile or, or a percentage is how much out of a hundred it is. So remember our last part we could write would be one to one hundred. So these are the four different ways I can write this number and represent it in different ways. This is the decimal, this is the fraction, this is the percentage, and this is a ratio. So now it's as easy as going through one question at a time. Each block of the granola is you know, one of these pieces right here. So I can see that each one is worth one hundredth. So all that stuff I just wrote over there, it says what percent is the point zero one. So the percent would be one percent for each piece. And then it says what percent of the bar remains. So what percent is shaded? There's 80 of them, right? There's 80 out of the 100 total pieces filled. So that is the same as 80%. And then what other ways can we represent this percent? We can say that 80, oops, I was about to write that a couple times, sorry. We can say that 80% is the same as 80 to 100, which is the same as 80 over 100 which is the same as, and I'm going to have to write that down here, which is the same as 0.80. And that is the different ways we can write 
I'll just point them out here. Decimals, fractions, ratios, and percentages. The decimal represents tenths and hundredths, so 80 hundredths would be 8 tenths, because once I get to 10, I move over one, that's 8 times. 80 one hundredths, 80 out of 100, 80 to 100, or 80 of 100, and 80 percent, or 80 out of 100. The end. Good luck with the rest of it. Believe in yourself. You can do it. Woohoo!